doing, Kitty? Pick up a packet there. All right. At the top of your packet, got it. Mm -hmm. Please put your first and last name. Today's day is the 13th. This week, um, the items and things that are due, we have our warm up. Please make sure that you submit by Friday. Okay? Please submit by Friday. Um, if you need help with the warm up, you need to ask in class because it is in class. But if you're absent, there's a daily video that you can watch. Okay. Please go back and watch the daily video. You can't just put absent on the sheet and think that I'm going to give you credit for that. It's still, still taking off 25 points each day. So even when you're absent, you have time for every day you're absent. You get an extra day to, to submit or complete. Okay. If you need more time, then you need to just come see me and Ms. Reyes. I'm a little behind. Can I get some more time? Okay. Canvas is still going to flag things being late, but um, that's just telling you that you turned it in after the due date. Doesn't mean that I'm taking off points. Any questions about that? Okay. Homework is due at the end of the week. Please submit by Friday. Okay. If you can't submit at home, I have been giving you time to submit in class. Don't use it as an excuse. Just use your time wisely. Bless you, babe. And submit. If you have questions about the homework, text me and remind, but make sure you take a picture of it, okay? Because I could be anywhere. If I'm not near a computer, if I don't have my book back with me, I still would like to address and answer your questions. So in order to be able to do that, please take a picture of it, okay? I don't walk around with packets. Contrary to what people think, I don't walk around with packets. So please Make sure you take a picture of your problem if you have questions in your mind, okay? Um, we have a quiz this Friday. Your quiz on Friday is going to be on equations, okay? So you need to make sure that you study. It's going to be on inequalities. We're working on that today. Um, and literal equations. We'll start literal equations tomorrow. Do not forget also that you may be asked to justify steps. So study, study, and study. And again, the date that that's on, that is Friday, okay? Um, to prepare for the test, you need to study notes, okay? You can watch the video, the daily videos, and I do have virtual tutoring this week, okay? Please, if you need tutoring, please request it by texting me. Okay, please request tutoring by texting me and we can schedule a time. All right, you can text me and remind. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay. All right, today we're going to write down our EQ. We're going to do the warm up. I'm going to model for you how to solve inequalities. We, that means we're going to put some notes in our interactive notebook, and we're going to do some guided practice problems. We're going to do workbook, page 26. Um, we're going to add that to our homework if we don't finish it, and it's problems um, one and two. So if we don't finish it, it's for homework. Set 4A is homework, and if we don't finish these problems, it's going to be for homework. Let's work on the warm up at this time. I'm going to pause for the calls and I want you to work on the warm up. Oh, nope. Forgot essential questions, right? I'm sorry, y'all. The essential questions are on the board. The first one is to describe how to solve multi step equations. Describe how to solve multi-step equations. Describe how to solve multi-step equations. Describe how to solve multi-step equations. This is what we're working on today. Number two, describe how to solve inequalities. 
describe how to solve inequalities. Describe how to solve inequalities. The third essential question is describe how to justify steps solving equations. Describe how to justify steps to solving equations, okay? And the last is describe how to solve literal equations, which will start tomorrow. Describe how to solve literal equations. Okay. Now I'm going to pause to give you a chance to catch up. And I want you to work on your warm-up, please. Work on your warm-up problems, please. All right, all of the following questions would be calculator inactive. So I didn't give you a calculator for this on purpose, okay? All right, is this square root of 8, is it rational or irrational? Yeah. This is irrational, okay? Very good. It's a non-perfect group. Standard form is writing the equation back to its original state. This is what you do to do that, 4.05. This is a negative exponent, 5. So you're going to locate the decimal and move it. To make the number smaller, you're going to move it to the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times. This is where your decimal would be. And you're going to replace these placeholders. You're going to fill in with 0. So your answer would be 4 zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4. 4, 0, 5. This is the number. Okay. <clears throat> Did anybody get that right? All right. Now you know. So tomorrow, you're going to work on that. Positive exponent, make the number bigger. Negative exponent, move it to the left to make it smaller. Yes. So what's the 10? Hmm? The 10, it says. 10? Well, when you multiply a number, like if I multiply 5 times 1, what does that give me? When I multiply 5 times 10, what does that give me? Hmm? 50. 50. When I multiply 5 times 100, what does that give me? 500. Which is the same as saying 5 times 10 to the 0 power. 5 times 10 to the first power. Because that's 1 zero. 5 times 10 to the what? Second power. So that's, that's all that is. It's 10th place. This is how you write a number in scientific notation, just like what I did here. All right, so let's look at this. Let's compare. This has six zeros. This has seven zeros. Which one is bigger? The one with the seven zeros. This is bigger. Okay? Um, even though this number in front is bigger than this number up front, but still, look, 50 and... 400. See, 400 is still going to be bigger. It's got more zeros than, than 5. This is going to be bigger here. What's the two hold, What's the two integers that this square root is in between? Summer? 6 and 7. Okay. 6 times 6. Look how Miss Reyes is showing her work. Okay. 6 times 6 is 36. We know that the perfect square root is 36. 7 times 7 is 49. So there's a perfect square root of 49. Look, 41 is the square root of 41 is between these two perfect square roots. So my answer is 6 and 7. This is my answer. Okay? Look at me showing my work. This is you need to show your work. All right? How would I solve v to the second power is equal to 400? What do I do to get rid of the second power or squaring a number? Yes. Not divide. We went through this before. Don't forget. What's the opposite of squaring a number? Yes. Mm -mm. 
What's the opposite of squaring and square root? So we're going to find the square root on both sides. What's the square root of V to the second power or V squared? Just V because V times V is V to the second. What's the square root of 40? I'm sorry, ah, 400, 20. So your answer is either V is equal to a positive 20 or ironically, V is equal to a negative 20. Why negative 20? Because a negative 20 times a negative 20 is still a positive 400. Any questions about that? All right, let me get rid of this so I can have some space. Okay, so let's divide. All right, so let's reduce this. Four over eight. What's four over eight reduced to? Somebody said, uh, say again, one half. So now look at this. This is x to the second over x. So you're going to subtract the exponent. So this is x2 minus 1. So that's why I have x2 minus 1. Let's do the y's. y to the fifth over y to the seventh. That's the same as saying y5 minus 7. y5 minus 7. Okay, so remember the long way of this one is to write x times x over x. What's x divided by x? 1. So what are we left with? Just 1x, okay? What about this one? y times y times y times y times y. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Y divided by y is one. Y divided by y, 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 one. So what's left? One over y to the what power? Second, okay? So look, my answer is when I do this, I get one over two. I get x to the first power, y to the negative two. But remember, I can't keep it like this. I got to write it like this. So my final answer is one over two, x, y to the second on the bottom. Some people might see this x over 2y to the second. It's the same thing. You don't have to put the 1 there. It's the same thing. Did you have a question? I lost my train of thought. Sorry. 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 All right. Okay, let's label our homework. Make sure we understand what, what we're doing every night or each night. Set 4A. This is uh, Monday. I keep picking up my own pencil. This is Monday. This is what you're doing tonight. And don't forget the workbook problem, page 26, if we don't get finished with it today. Tuesday. Wednesday. and Thursday. Please put your work on a separate piece of paper and make sure it is labeled. Copy the problem, show the work. Copy the problem, show the work. Don't write answers on this, okay? Any questions, comments, or concerns? Label your work. All right, let's take out our interactive notebook, please. Hmm. The last page that we did was page 20, and that was on justifying steps. The last page we did was on page 20, and we did justifying, justifying steps. So we are going to be on page 21. We're going to be on page 21. 
21, Solving Inequalities. Solving Inequalities. Solving Inequalities. Uh, a pencil sharpener. Do you see if it works? I don't know. All right. So, under the flag, solving inequalities. The first thing you need to know are the inequality symbols, okay? All right, so we have less than symbol. The opposite of that, the mouth going in the opposite direction is the greater than symbol. If you put one line under the less than symbol, it's less than or equal to. So we got less than, equal to. Less than or equal to. If you put one line under the greater than sign, it then it then becomes greater than or equal to. So you have you have an about sign. This is about the answer. Similar, just one little squiggly line. These are some you might see, and I don't want you to get confused with anything else. You might have an equal to sign, not equal to sign. You might see this. I don't want you to confuse these with inequalities because they're not. You might have an angle. It looks very similar to less than, but it's not. It has a flat line right here. This is the angle symbol. It's not less than, it's angle. And then you might see three little dots, which stand for therefore. And we might add some as we go along, because there are a lot of symbols. And what is this sign? The infinity sign. You might see these, okay? There are so many symbols, but um, I really need for you to understand these are not inequalities. These, less than, greater than, less than or equal to, greater than, those are called inequalities. Yes, baby. Therefore, therefore. Like if you're proving something, you say, therefore, this has to be the answer. So instead of using the words, therefore, they'll say three will die. Who came up with all these symbols? I don't know. <laughs> People, I guess. I mean, just same way. The reason why your mama named you Pooh Bear. Because <laughs> she wanted to. You're Pooh Bear. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. So we got... <laughs> Steps for solving It's better than some names, I tell you. Some nicknames are terrible. All right. This is what you need to make sure you remember. If you multiply or divide both sides by a negative number, the inequality is going to flip, okay? This is super important. If you multiply, just when you multiply, okay? Multiply or divide, not add, subtract, but multiply or divide. Move this out of the way. 
both sides by a negative number You flip the inequality. Flip the inequality. Flip the inequality. All right, here we go. First step is distributive property. Same thing as the other steps, guys. It's the same stuff. You have to do distributive property first. Kids are cruel. Y'all go pick on them anyway. It don't even matter what you name them. Yeah. Your kid, it don't matter what you name your kid, John. They're gonna pick on him. You, you John the Baptist. Baptist. You don't it, 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 you, it don't matter what your name is. All right, here we go. Okay, combine like terms. Combine like terms. Super important. You're going to combine like terms on each side. Before you start moving stuff, you need to combine like terms on each side separately. So go ahead and look at each side separately and see if you can combine like terms. Don't move anything until you look at each side separately and see if you can combine things on one side of the equal sign and look at the other side and see if you can combine things on the other side of the equal sign. Okay, three, you're going to move the variables to the same side. Move variables to the same side. So if you're moving a positive 2x to the other side, you're going to subtract 2x. If you're moving a negative 4p to the other side, you're going to add 4p to both sides, okay? And last thing that you're going to do is isolate the variable. Isolate the variable is the last step. Make sure you subtract numbers first, and then last is to multiply and divide. So to isolate the variable by using inverse operation. Let's do some practice problems. This is still going to be page 21. So this is page 21 continued. And we're going to do some practice problems, okay? All right, let's do it. The first one. We have 2x plus 4. And let's do, let's do greater than or equal to 24. We'll start with an EP, okay? So now, here in this problem, there's no distributive property. We cannot combine like terms on either side because you can't combine these two together, and there's nothing to combine on that side. So we don't have variables on both sides to move, so we skip that step. So our last step is to isolate the variable. So to isolate X, which do we get rid of first, the two or the four? All right, good. How do you get rid of the positive four? Subtract four. So you're going to subtract four on both sides. Okay. So when you subtract four on both sides, this is gone and we're left with 2x. Bring down the greater than or equal to sign. What's 24 minus four? 20. 20. Lastly, to get the x by itself, how do we get rid of that two? Divide. You're going to divide both sides by two. So this is going to be x is greater than or equal to what number? 10. 10. Okay. 10. So to graph this, please pay attention. When you're graphing, this is how this, is how this works. I draw a number line. I'm going to put the answer in the center or whatever the num numerical number I got in the center. Center. I put two numbers on this side, two or three numbers on the other side. Numbers increasing here, this is 11, 12. 
decreasing here, that's nine and eight. I'm going to put a circle above the numerical number that I got. So now this, since it's equal to, am I going to leave it open or am I going to shade it in? Okay. Is 10 a part of the answer? Yes, yes. yes because the, all the values are greater than or equal to 10. So I can shade in 10 because that's a part of the answer. What other numbers are going to be part of the answer? 11, 12, or 9, 8? So I need to shade on this side. All right. Pause for the calls. Any questions? Let's do the next one. Two. <laughs> That's a good thing. So we got negative three P plus one. Okay. I'm going to give you time. See if you can do that one on your own. Great. All right, here we go. Okay. Distributive property. You should have gotten this. Did you get this? Okay. I don't believe the parrot because you always saying you just look copycat. Yeah, I got that. <laughs> Next, we have negative 3p and then equal to. <laughs> no, Max, what did you do first, though? What did you do after the, at this line? Oh, I did uh, plus 3. Okay. You are doing great, Dad. I know. Quick, buddy. I'm sure about that. Hush. All right. So this is gone, and we're left with negative p. What did you get on this side? Uh, negative, 15. negative 15. And what'd you do last? Uh, divide by what? Three. Negative three. And so <clears throat> when you divide by a negative, what happens to this inequality? Mm, it flips. That's okay. And so now what is this? Five. All right. So look. Why, Miss Reyes, this is the question. Why do we have to flip? Why do we have to flip the inequality? Let me show you why, okay? Please listen. This is super important. Okay, if I have, let me move this out the way. If I have five on this side and I have six here, which one's larger? The six is larger. Okay, so now I'm going to multiply both sides by a negative. Okay, so let's multiply both sides by a negative. What's this equal to over here? And what's this equal to over here? Negative. Now which one is bigger? Negative the negative 5 is bigger. So that's what happens. When you multiply both sides by a negative, you must flip that inequality because of this. Okay? What you going to say? Go ahead, so even If I say the P was a number and it was greater than... And, uh, then you're going to flip it to less than after you multiply or divide both yeah, sides by that. So it feels like uh, 18. Yeah, it's like 18. Yeah, it's like 18. Yeah, it's like okay, so 18, 24. Like That's different, yeah. Because still, this is, guys, please hush. This right here is, is greater than. But then when you divide by negative 1, that's going to make this negative 18 and negative 24. So now this is going to be bigger than that. So that's just what it is. Okay. All right, let's go to the next. We, I'm going to see if you can do this problem. I didn't do that Yeah, I didn't. Oh, I'm sorry. This is your answer here. Oh, let's graph that. I'm going to graph it up here. Put the 5 in the middle. You got a couple numbers on this side. This is 6 and 7. This is 4 and 3. Put a circle above the 5. We're going to shade the circle in because it's equal to. And since the p-values are greater than, we're going to shade to the right. Because all of these numbers would make this sentence true. Okay. <clears throat> Got it? Yes. 
Uh, yeah, what's, what's your question? Um, Let me pause. Six. This is the graph for this. Yeah. Okay, let's keep going. This is still continued page 21. All right, so let's do this third one. We have nine or negative nine plus the letter A, that's the variable, divided by 15. And we got this, this is the greater than sign, one. All right, so let's look at this. Please focus on what Ms. Reyes is doing. You got to get A by itself. So the first thing you need to get rid of is this 15. This is division. The opposite of division is multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides by 15 to get rid of that 15. When we do that, the 15s cancel out over here. And I'm left with negative 9 plus the variable A. And on this side, I have 15. Okay. Any questions about that? Yes, baby. No, you. Go ahead. Uh, you say you need to multiply uh, both sides by 15, but mm -hmm. isn't that a 9? So can't you multiply the 15? Mm -mm. We got to get rid of the 15 that's on the bottom here first. We got to get rid of the de um, the denominator first. Because you can't do anything with this because the 15 is on the bottom. But you said multiply both sides. Both sides, both sides by 15. Whatever I do to this oh, side, it has to be to this side. I think about both sides top and bottom. No, both sides of the inequality. Okay, you had a question? Yes, go ahead. Um, this is division. So the opposite of division is multiplication. So the only way to get rid of 15 is to divide, I mean, to multiply 15 on both sides because that's this is division. The opposite of division is multiplication. So you're going to multiply both sides of the inequality by 15. So now what are we going to do to get A by itself? Add 9 to both sides. Good job, baby. So when I add 9 to both sides, this gives me A. And what does this give me here? 24. Do you see how that is now? Okay, so now to graph this, oops, sorry. 24 is in the middle, correct? You got some numbers on this side and some numbers on this side. All right, is my circle going to be open? Am I going to leave it open or am I going to shade it? It's still open because there's no equal to sign. Am I going to shade? Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so the what open you think sign so? is where it's exactly 24. Uh, yes, when it's equal to. Uh -huh. If it's equal to, then you shade it. If there's no equal to sign, leave it open. By open, you mean? Don't shade it because it's not a part of the answer. So does 24 not equal A? It does not because it's not equal to. It's supposed to be whatever A is should be greater than 24, but not equal to it. So what's greater is this way. Okay. Wait, so we can shade it? We shade it to the right because this is greater than. I don't understand. Tell me, I, I don't understand what you don't understand until you verbalize it. You're, 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 uh... I'm graphing the answer. My answer here is that my A values or that my values for A are greater than 24. So that means all the numbers that are greater than 24 need to be shaded. That's why I went to the right. Because all of these numbers are greater than 24. Right, because it's not equal to. It's just greater than, but not equal to. Does that make sense now? Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's do four and five. Four, you have negative 30. I'm sorry. 132 greater than 12. See if you can do that one on your own. And then also see if you can do number five. <laughs> See if you can do those two.
that gives you 12 in. When you multiply 12 times the nine, what does that give you? A positive 108. 108. Okay, so now on this line, you need to get in by itself. So get rid of the 108 first. You're going to subtract 108 on both sides. When you subtract 108 on this side, negative plus a negative is going to give us a negative. And you add, this gives us 200 what? 40. 40. Bring down the 12 in. Now, this is multiplication here. The opposite of multiplication is division. So you're going to divide both sides by a positive 12. That's going to keep the inequality the same. Don't flip it because you didn't divide by a negative. You divide by a positive. So this is going to give you a negative what? 20. 20. Okay? So look, another way, some people are confused when they see it like this. This is saying negative 20 is greater than n. So another way to say that, if, if negative 20 is greater than then n, then that means n is less than negative 20. This is easier for people to comprehend. So if you see it like this, go ahead and switch it to this. As long as negative 20 is on the bigger end, the mouse should be open to the negative 20 in both situations. To graphically represent this, again, you're going to put the numerical number here with a circle above it. You got some numbers on each side of the number line. You got a question or you just stretch it? You got a question? Uh, no, I got a question. Go ahead, David. So how come the 132 and 108 don't go positive? Because you're adding them. If I owe you $132, which I wouldn't, but if I owed you $132 plus I owe you $108, I'm going to owe you now $240. never would happen, but I would owe you $200. $240. Because I'm adding two negative numbers. It's going to continue to make it negative. But now when I'm multiplying, because remember when you multiply a negative times a negative is a positive. This is adding two negatives. That's going to be a negative number. Okay. All right. Am I going to shade to the left or to the right? To the left. Left. Smaller. All right, let's see if we got this one right. Okay. The first thing, raise your hand. What did you do first here? Yes. You multiply both sides by four. Don't pack up yet, okay? We're almost there. Bye, sweetheart. Yes, write that down. This gives you negative four. This is gone, and we're left with 12 plus B. Now what do we do? Subtract 12. Very good. And so that's going to give me a negative what? 16. Another way to write this is B less than negative 16. You see? To shade this, I'm going to turn the TV on. To shade this, I'm going to shade less than, so that's going to go in this direction. It's going to be an open circle because it's not equal to. All right, so please make sure you do workbook page 20 what? 26. It's just three problems on that page, okay? All right.